my name is Daniele. I am uh, the marketing uh, event manager for Titan. And today we will talk about uh, the analysis of dental occlusion in the first dental examination with Titan. Facts, tip, and considerations with uh, Dr. Simona Gigo. Uh, just a quick uh, reminder before we, I present you the doctor and I will let her speak for the rest of this evening. Uh, this webinar is recorded. Uh, this webinar will be go up uh, in uh, in YouTube, uh, I think tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. So for any one of you that arrives later or want to uh, watch again this webinar, uh, it's it's free to, to watch again. After that, uh, Dr. Simona Gigo will speak um, for about uh, half an hour, 45 minutes. And then after that, you can make all those questions uh, that you want. Uh, below you, you can find two boxes. One is called chat. The other one is called uh, question and answers. You can type your uh, question there and I will read uh, the, the question to the doctor. And then so we can uh, make all, all the questions after the presentation is over. Uh, that being said, uh, I present you our uh, doctor for tonight, our later uh, is Dr. Simona Gigo. She has graduated in Turin with an experimental thesis uh, about a new program for the differential diagnosis in patients with cephalegia. She is a clinic, she is an active doctor, so she will, pick, uh, she will speak about real cases, active cases. And uh, from 2017, she has the studio Associato Gigo and Barrera. So she works in her studio. Um, I think I said everything, uh, but for the great experience that Dr. Simona Gigo has, uh, I can speak half an hour and uh, I will not have uh, uh, finished the, the presentation. So I let her speak. Thank you for being here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, doctor. The audience is yours. So thank you. Um, I'm very happy and grateful to be here. So thanks, Tizan, for having me. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, I thank you for sharing your time and for finding some time um, for being here. I know how hard it is to find some time. And I'm, I, I appreciate uh, your being here. So. Um, my webinar um, is focusing on the use of teeth on exam during the first dental examination. So uh, when we first meet uh, our patients, we have to mm, look for a lot of things. Um, we have to um, focus on the main purpose, this having a general idea of the patient's mm, desires, needs, and we have to collect the widest number possible of data uh, about him or her in order to make a good diagnosis, to um, know something about his or her personality, and uh, about his or her dental history. Uh, traditionally, both patients and we dentists uh, focus mm, the attention on the tooth side. So pain, cavities, periodontal problems, missing teeth, old processes, and so on. Uh, but we know that there is so much more to focus on. And with Tizen, during the first visit, we can add some stuff to our, to our visit practice. Um, we can have an idea of the general muscular situation of the patient. Um, if we are skilled clinicians, we can have Tizen confirm our diagnosis, our idea, uh, and for the less experienced dentist, Titan can give a guide, a good guide, um, about the muscular situation, the occlusal situation. Um, it also has some, some good side effects. It also provides a valid starting point 
of conversation with the patient. Um, the diagrams, as we will see later, are very easy to understand and they make a good point, a starting point um, for having a conversation with the patient. Sometimes uh, they don't even know that they have some para functions or they know, but they don't think it's some matter that can interest uh, a dentist. So um, if we show the patients that we are looking also for something else, not only teeth, um, they are prone to talk about something else, something more wide. So um, what do we look for during our first dental examination? The patient's needs and desires. Usually the patient comes for a, for a reason. Some of them want a general checks, some others have a problem, some have all processes or want to fix some, some teeth or want to replace some missing teeth. And so they have some needs and, and some desires that are important and we have to take them into consideration. Uh, the second, second place we look for, obviously, dental problems. This is what we are used to do from our, the beginning of our practice. Um, but we can also have a wider uh, range of um, things to look after. These parafunctions, they are very, very common. Uh, some patients know that they are, they are parafunctioning, some others don't know, and some others don't even know that parafunction exists. We can look um, for overloads or underloads, as we will see later on the clinical cases. There are some patients that can't load enough, can't um, put enough force, enough strength uh, while, while clenching the teeth. And this is also a very important um, thing to consider. And we can also look at, um, for asymmetries. So, which are the most common situation about parafunction and, uh, and occlusal problems that we have to face? Okay, we have um, patients with muscular occlusal imbalance and or perfunction, and those patients are aware of them. Um, are the ones that when are in front of you say, oh, I know that I clench, I suffer from bruxism, um, I have, um, uh, I am not, not totally um, balanced, uh, I only chew on one side, I have some missing teeth on the other side. Um, they are aware of having a problem. Some um, others have muscular occlusal imbalance and or function, but they are unaware of them. This, those are the patients that uh, look at you when you say, do you know if you clench the teeth? Do you even notice your, your muscles um, stiff or you have pain? And they say, no, I don't do those things. Um, my, um, I, have, I am aware that my teeth are a little bit worn out, but it's because I eat a lot and I chew a lot. So those are, are the patients that are not aware of having some muscular uh, occlusal imbalance. The third ones are the perfect ones, patients with no muscular occlusal imbalance and no parafunction. Um, usually are very young patients. Uh, or sometimes a little more aged people, but aged people with a perfect balance and no parafunction are quite rare to find. Okay, so um, 
I am a clinical doctor. I am not a research doctor, so I will share with you my experience. I'm using Titan. I have used Titan um, for the last five years in my daily routine in my office. And uh, I use it almost in all first examinations. So I will show you some cases, different ones from the others, um, and share my experience. Okay, the first case is um, a case of a young girl. She's 15 years old. She came for a routine checkup. Uh, her dad um, brought, the, uh, brought she to me uh, to have a check. So, uh, I noticed, and she noticed, a slight chipping on the incisal edge uh, of the 2.1. And there was no, no mm, okay, I, I didn't have any reason uh, about parafunction, but I wanted to know if the chipping on the incisal edge could be a sign of uh, parafunction. So, this is um, the scan, the scanning of her mouth is a young, beautiful young girl mouth, but we can see um, on the incisal edge, a little um, small part of, of uh, animal that is not there. So this is the occlusal uh, lower scan, no signs of parafunction. And this is the upper, and even there are no signs of parafunction, no, uh, absolutely nothing. So is chipping due to parafunction? Clearly not, but with titan, we can have the proof of that. So this is, um, the static test. Uh, this is the first test uh, that we do with Titan. For the ones of you that are not um, used to, um, to use it uh, in the daily routine, I will just resume briefly um, what is the Titan exam and um, what mean uh, what, what the meaning of the index is. So um, we use the TITAN to measure the balance of the dental occlusion. So the patient has some uh, proof of clenching. Um, we have the four probes that are put um, with some gel uh, adhesive um, things on the skin of the patient. The first two are put on the temporal muscles and the second ones are on the muscular muscles. The patient does two proofs. The first one with some cellular rolls in between the two, um, the two parts of the mouth. And uh, this is to calibrate the device. And the second one is done with um, the teeth, uh, upper and lower teeth in contact. So, what do we have here? We have the uh, some main indexes, or uh, five, six main indexes that um, are useful for the analysis of the dental occlusion. So the first one is the POC. Um, it is a uh, this index is a percentage of lab coefficient. It's provided both for the temporalis and for the masseter muscles, and identifies the activity um, of the muscles, specifying which side is prevailing to the other one. So the first, in the first row, we have the POC of the temporalis muscle. Uh, we have a slight um, prevailing of the right side, but index is in the range of the normal normality of the average. Same thing is for the masseter. So uh, we will see in the next slide uh, how balanced they are. 
The third one is the very center. Very center compares the activity of the temporals with the activity of the masseter, and it reveals whether the masseter muscles or the temporal muscles prevail. Physiologically, a posterior barycenter is preferred um, where the masseter prevail over the temporals because when we clench, we have to do physiologically more strength on the back teeth. And when we do more strength, or the, uh, we have more strength on the back teeth, we activate the masseter. If we have more load on the anterior teeth, we have, uh, we have more strength and more load um, on the temporal muscles. The torsion, the torsion evaluates the cross activity of the two couples of muscles. So uh, if, we, if we have, this is not the case, but we have an imbalance and we have, uh, for example, the left, uh, temporalis that had prevails on the right and the right masseter that prevails on the left, we have a torsion. When we clench, we have a torsion of the mandible. And as we, we know, um, non-axial um, loads are absolutely not indicated to be present in a mouth. Uh, then we have the impact. It's very, very important um, index because it evaluates the intensity of muscle work. Mm, and this index is strictly related to the strength of the bite. So very high work is index of a clenching patient. Um, a very low one, and we will see some cases later, some cases later, very low one, is index of something that doesn't work, an uncomfortable position or some pain, is, is a nociceptive uh, pain index. The last one is the symmetry that indicates the activity, the comparison between uh, the activity of the left the muscles with the activity of the right muscles. It's different from the torsion. The asymmetry is comparing the left muscle, muscles with the right muscles. The torsion is usually, usually the, um, a movement index. So let's go back to our young girl. The index are all in average in the normal uh, standards. She has 89% of um, regular uh, activity. So this is kind of like traffic light. We have 89% of efficiency. In some patients, we have very, very low indexes. And this means that there is no balance in their uh, occlusion. On the upper image here, we also have two targets uh, that are centered. In some cases, we will see that an arrow can show up here or there, uh, giving the direction of the torsion. And the two targets here are on the red square is in the center. So, it means that there is a balance of occlusion. And this is absolutely proved by the second page of the report. It is a, a visual one. This one is the one I start from when talking with the patient. It's the first image that I will show him or her because it's the more easily understandable one. That girl, has 25% for each sector that is quite different to find even in balanced patients. So absolutely the chipping on the 2.1 is due to perfection. No, probably she had some, she bites something uh, hard or maybe she had little trauma and no parafunctional, absolutely. 
So let's move on to case two. She's a woman, 15, 50 years old. She came for a routine checkup. And I noticed as that, that her teeth were slightly were out, were out. And she had no awareness of pair function. So I took the scan as I usually do. This is another good way of communicating with patients. We can see that there is some signs of pair function on the front teeth. And even this is, these are some signs of parafunction. She has mm, some orthodontic problems. Uh, she knows she used to have to have an orthodontic um, therapy when she was young, and then uh, she stopped to um, to to wear night guards, and everything just came back to the previous situation. What about our question? The question is, is there a parafunction? And if so, what type of parafunction? So let's analyze our report. We have a good situation, 89% of efficiency, centered situation. Uh, we have a slight anterior barycenter. You notice that the lower average is 90. She's and she is 87.78%. So we, it is almost in the normality, but we have an impact. So a occlusal strength that is 178.18, it is quite high. So even if we look at the balancing of the four muscles, we see that it's not completely balanced like the young girl of the first case, but in some way she is balanced. So what can we think about her? No pain, no awareness of pair function, um, no big signs of pair function. What type of pair function? with 178% of impact, she is clearly a clencher. So, third case. This is a slightly most complicated one. She's a female, 61 years old. She asks for aesthetic improvement and reports muscular stiffness and pain. Uh, every one of us know that a patient that reports some pain, muscular pain, stiffness, is a patient that we have to be careful to deal with. Um, and sometimes they are very stressed one. That lady is a manager and she has very, she's very busy and she, in the last year she had to manage with depression. So I expect some, something not perfect in her muscular, muscular balance. Um, the X-ray don't show big things uh, apart from this endodontic problem here. She has no pain, no, absolutely no symptoms. Uh, as we look at her photo, we can immediately notice that probably she had some, um, she lose some vertical dimension of occlusion. Uh, and even her smile is not a relaxed one. I know that being in front of the camera is not for everyone. But she's not relaxed. She is it's like uh, clenching the teeth even when smiling. So let's have a look at the scans. The front teeth are worn out. 
uh, and we can have a clear image also here. And there is no uh, similarities between the front ones that are so much worn out and, and the posterior ones. And even in the lower, lower jaw images, we see the same. We have the front teeth that are worn out. Um, you see, this, this one is first visit, first examination. There is some, uh, some things that have to be fixed. But I took the scan together with the titan just to have a first idea of the situation of the patient. So what kind of parafunction? Why those front teeth are so worn out? OK, let's have a look at the first page of the record. We still have 88% of uh, efficiency. So she bites well, she bites good. No problem with biting and chewing. We have an anterior barycenter and we expected that because of the those anterior worn out teeth. And we also have 143.29% of impact. It's quite high, not super high, but it's quite high. Um, she is partially aware of her parafunction. Um, she says, that she had no pain, but she has a kind of discomfort, a kind of mm, um, not being able to relax completely. Um, and if we have a look at the um, balancing, we see that she is balanced. So if we just have our our question, what kind of parafunction? She's a clencher, but probably um, she has an onward bruxism. She's not a big bruxis, but probably she had the hab she has the habit of going onward with her mandible and lower, lower jaw. And it's kind of, and habit. So she's not a big bruxist, but she is an, an onward bruxist. Okay, so that's one. Um, she's a female, 58 years old. She has for dental hygiene and checkup. No muscular pain, but severe neck pain. She suffers from neck pain and uh, she reports that the neck pain is always present. She doesn't remember when it started, but it's a lot of years. Our question is, can masticatory muscles be a contributing factor of her neck pain? And this is an interesting question. It's not the dental one. Okay, so let's have a look at indexes. Red light, 69% of efficiency. And the two arrows are starting to appear. She has a torsion leftward. So the prevalence, the percentage of overlap of the temporalis is on the left. So we have the temporal, left temporal working more than the right, and we have the right masseter working more than the left. And when the antagonists, couple of muscle, work together, they origin a torsion. She has a very, very high anterior barycenter. The impact is normal but clearly there is an asymmetry. 
So let's have a look at her balance uh, picture. The left temporal has almost 50% of the work of the muscles, while the left muscular is the less represented one. And the other part is taken from the right muscles. Um, here, we started to introduce also a dynamic proof, a dynamic test. Um, it is made with uh, our probes on place and we um, give her chewing gum, just ask her to chew for a while. And then we take the right chewing test, making her chew her chewing gum on the right, with the right teeth for 20 seconds. And we ask her to, uh, to move the, the chewing gum on the left. So, um, what are those in, in index telling us? The frequency, bytes per second, is the frequency of masticatory movements each second. She bites a little bit um, faster in the right than in the left. We have the temporal impact right and left, the muscles are impact right and left, and then we have um, the, the, the total work. Uh, it's a um, kind of physical uh, parameter, uh, and it indicates the electric potential. So, the most important thing here is the global symmetry index, it, SMI here. Um, the optimal value is 100. 100, uh, 100 percent, 100 of uh, SMI in, indicates that there is a perfect symmetry between left and right. Um, this is not the case, clearly. So what can we see? When this lady, when this lady is choose the chewing gum on the, on the right, she activates her right temporal, right muscular, and she activates totally the left temporal. And when she chews on the left, she chews with um, quite the totality of left work is done by the temporal muscle. So, can masticatory muscle be called to contribute factor of neck pain? Yes. She has to be balanced. Um, I made a night guard. I balanced it with teeth. And uh, this is not the focus of this lesson, but her neck pain just went down and it almost disappeared. Okay, so let's move on. Um, she's a female, 45 years old, has a checkup. She reports clenching and fatigue when chewing. So she is aware of something not going on well. Why? The question is why? she feels uncomfortable um, while chewing. Let's have a look. 90% of efficiency centered. All index in the normality, but 202.76% of impact. She is a clencher, hard clencher, almost perfectly balanced. But surprise when? We have her chew our chewing gum. When she chews on the right, she activates the left muscles. And when she chews on the left, she activates also the right ones. It's like uh, a person that wants to lift uh, a load from, from, from the table. And when using the right hand, also uses the, right, the left one. Of course, she's 
having fatigue when chewing. What did we, what, what can we do? We can just try to low down, lower her clenching. Uh, she had a mouth, a mouth nightmare too. Um, but we have the proof and Titan gave out the proof that something is going on when she chews. She's a clench and bilateral muscle activation while chewing. Okay, let's meet that man. He's a male, 48 years old. He asked for dental hygiene and check up. And he reports some muscular fatigue and tension during the day. Quite normal uh, to situation, no um, problems, certain problems. The question is, is he comfortable in this maximum intercostation? Okay, my, um, I have to add something. My um, question is due to the fact that while talking and examining him, some, I noticed him to close in anteriorized position. Um, when I asked him, please close while doing the scan, uh, she, uh, he didn't close in this, um, maximum interscastus inter position, but he closed at, uh, in an anteriorized position. So um, I asked myself, is he comfortable in maximum intercostation? So this is the scan, mm, nothing to a, a little bit of big bite, anterior, anterior big bite, no big problems. Uh, some mm, not perfectly uh, aligned teeth. Let's have a look at the indexes. Almost everything out of normality. So red light, 71%. Asymmetry, anterior bicenter torsion, but the one that goes and, and catch our attention is the impact, 37.85. It's very, very low. What does it mean? It means that probably um, he's not comfortable when he's uh, clenchy in the maximum intercostal position. And he's not balanced, but it's not our point. The point is that he tries to go onward with his mandible because probably his mandible is in a position that is a little bit too much posterior. And when he's in that position, he's not comfortable in clenching. And when we give him a chewing gum and we make her chew, the chewing test is normal. Not perfectly balanced when he chews on the right. He also has some activation of the less muscles. It's very common, but he can move the mandible and he goes in a, most, in a more comfortable position. No, he's not comfortable in his maximum intercompation, intercompation. Um, This does not mean that we have to do something. Probably we will do, but this is uh, something we have to know. And that gives us information for making a treatment plan. Okay, um, let's have a case comparison. Two ladies, 24 and 40 years old, both report frequent headaches. headaches. So both of them have clearly, um, especially the left one, um, big masseters. And those two cases can seem similar at first sight. And do we expect similar results in the test? So let's have a look. The first one, the 24 years old lady, 84% uh, of um, our uh, ring light, 
Um, what do we have there? We have something not perfectly um, balanced, but the more um, important thing to notice is that the impact, 122. The other ones are, um, except from the left, uh, the left uh, massive uh, activity, and we can see it here, and we can also see it in the next uh, slide. It is a different situation from the other one. So, the right, the lady on the right has a similar difference, a similar difference um, from the normality in the barycenter and torsion, uh, or everyone on the right torsion, 84% uh, um, of efficiency, but she has a low impact, lower than average. Why? So do we treat them in the same way if we have to treat them? And if we have a look at the visual, our visual cake, the younger lady, mm, right side, Masadir on the right, um, the other lady, a little bit more balanced. And when chewing, the younger one is a little bit more unbalanced because she uses more the masseter. The masseters, the, the other one uh, is more balanced. But which parafunction they have? They have the same one? No. The young lady, she's a clencher. The other lady, she's not a clencher. But he has a face mask contraction. They have the same headache, frontal, uh, around eyes and on the cheeks. But the first one, she clenches. The second one, no, she contracts face muscles. So, to finish, uh, when Titan cannot help us, which are the cases when we cannot use it um, and this is not helpful. When there are missing posterior teeth, we cannot ask a patient with missing posterior teeth to clench. Um, we have to, uh, for, for um, the first proof, uh, the calibration one, we have to put some cotton rolls in between the two, um, the two arches. And so if the patient doesn't have uh, the posterior teeth, of, of course, we will have an anteriorized position strength. If patients have dental pain, if patients have dental pain, they cannot uh, clench because they have pain in clenching. If they have articular pain, they will have nociceptive uh, reflexes and they will not clench on the maximum strength. Or patients with unsteady breaches or dentures, um, they don't have um, a steady and a fixed surface to just to start the proofs. And I will show you my last case. Uh, it's a case uh, about um, the not, um, the uselessness of Titan in those cases. She's a female, female, she, uh, 63 years old, as for checkup and wants to replace missing teeth. Um, why did I tested her with Titan? Uh, just to show you <laughs> when you don't have to use it. So um, she has some missing teeth on the right and on the left she has a uh, caries here uh, she has a pulpitis, so she's not going to clench properly. 
This is our scan. No particular problems. And the first value that comes to our attention is the impact 20%, 20, almost 21%. She couldn't clench properly because she missed some teeth on the right and she has pain on the left. So thank you for being here with me tonight. I hope I have been useful with my experience and I'm here to answer to your questions if you have some. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Simona. Thanks uh, to you, to your great presentation with, uh, if I counted right, six clinical cases, right? Amazing, amazing. Uh, so we can start now the questions. I see that there is already one uh, that I'm going to uh, read it to you out now. Uh, it's uh, well, first, it starts with a thank you for your excellent presentation. That's uh, I, I join this. Thank you. Uh, the question is, uh, the modern dentist uses multiple technologies at the new patient's visit, including CT or MRI, to assess the TM joint, the T-scan to assess the tooth contact, the balance and timing, and the EMG Titan to assess the muscular activity and balance. How does Titan integrate with the other measurement-based technologies? Okay, this is a good question, very specific one, so uh, <laughs> thank you for, yeah. for doing that. Okay. Um, Tifan is um, a first level diagnosis system. So when we, we, it's very easy to use, it's very quick to use, and it's a first level one. Uh, we have a patient and we have to decide if he needs more, um, more tests if he needs some um, going deeper on some, uh, on some phases of his situation. So um, in the first visit, we use Titan just to um, identify our problematic patients. And it is a muscular uh, test. And it's very quick, very easy to use, no pain, no, no difficulties, it's well tolerated by the patient. But we have to, um, to know and to remember that it is based on patient collaboration, cooperation. So um, in most cases, our um, MRI, CD scans, can add more and confirm our first idea of diagnosis. In some cases, they say something more, more deep and sometimes different. But uh, if there is something wrong with the muscular balance of the patient, Titan can help us to identify the patient that need uh, some more uh, deepened uh, in the diagnosis. Perfect. I think that was a great, great answer. Uh, if the doctor that uh, made this question has to add something, he can. Um, we receive other thank yous and our compliments, other compliments. Uh, I see another doctor that says, uh, thank you for your excellent presentation. Thanks That's right. In the chat. Um, so right now I don't see any any question anymore. And I think that using clinical cases as uh, as you did, uh, it's perfect because uh, actually it explains um, so much of the teeth and of the indexes and of the balance and of the all the all the things. So um, I think that for for this reason, there are no many questions. I, I see another one. Uh, I see that uh, this question is, uh, please have you noticed some changes after treatment on parameters? Yes, of course. This is a great satisfaction. It's something magic. The patients are amazed. Patients are amazed. Uh, oh, I didn't tell you that I give the, a printed report 
of the, to the patient when he leaves my office after the first visit. And uh, if I do some treatments that can go from uh, night guard to some big prosthesis rehabilitation, I always test the patients during the process of the therapy and at the end of them. And I usually have big results. Um, the patient feels well, but Tizan says and proves it. Um, the most amazing thing is balancing the night guards with Tizan. You can put the probes on, you can put in the muscle patient the, the mouth guard and then try it. And you have chair side proving of the efficiency of your bite. So um, this was not the focus on my lesson. So um, I, I obviously have a lot of um, second testing, third testing. Um, and when the patient does some treatment in my office, I usually uh, during the, um, the regular checkup visits when he has finished, finished the treatment, I usually check it with the with Titan. And yes, of course, there are big results and big changes. And again, the same doctor says, thanks, Dr. Gigo, and congratulations. So if someone else has any more questions, feel free to ask. And after that, we can, we can close and let the, the, the people from United States start their day and us from Europe end our day, because uh, actually this, this is the timing. Um, no, I don't think there are that there will be any 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 question anymore so i just want to add something uh, if someone has uh, any doubt anymore feel free to contact us you can find our website that is titan uh, we our social media always titan and our mail is info at titan.com so uh, for any question anymore, and if, if you have some question about Titan, feel free to ask us. If you have any question for the Dr. Gigo, ask us and we will report the question <laughs> to, the, to, the, to the doctor. Uh, Simona, uh, if you want to add something else to finish it off, the, okay, thank you, thank yours. you for your time. Thank you, Titan, for having me. And I'm always very happy to share my experience. I'm here, and if you have some doubts or you want to ask something, feel free to contact me through Titan. I will be happy, more than happy, to answer you and to. And for the, the ones of you that already use Titan, I will be happy to compare our experiences. Thank you so much. So for everyone. See you later. See you next time. And uh, this video will be uploaded on YouTube, uh, I think, tomorrow. So everything will be seenable again. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. And see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.